Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In recent months, numerous scientific discoveries have confirmed a foundational theory of the Electric Universe. That is a theory that filamentary networks of electric currents pervade space and are intimately connected to the formation of stars and galaxies. As the space sciences provide greater data across the entire electromagnetic spectrum, the electric universe theory moves closer to confirmation. Today, Professor Donald Scott discusses several recent discoveries that affirm the electrical connectedness throughout the universe. There's been several pieces put out by the Science Daily website. They put out a piece on um, that failed stars host powerful auroral displays. As you know, my major interest, at least for the past little while, has been this idea of the aurora and how it's powered by Birkeland currents here on Earth and also Saturn and Jupiter and Neptune and other planets, and also in stars. Wall and I both think that um, just about everything, all the galaxies are interconnected with a network of, call them what you will, I, I think a proper name is Birkeland currents. You can also call them uh, field-aligned minimum energy uh, currents. Oh, there's another name for them is uh, magnetic flux ropes. There's all sorts of names for them. The fact that they are there is almost uh, indisputable now. And so uh, just the other day, they said the following, by observing a brown dwarf 20 light years away using both radio and optical telescopes, astronomers have found that such so-called failed stars, there's nothing failed about them, but that's we want to call them that, uh, host powerful auroras near their magnetic poles. Additional evidence that brown dwarfs are more like giant planets than small stars. The astronomers are, are very caught up with uh, categories and categorization. What, what category does this object belong in? Uh, I don't think that's so important as, as to realize that just about everything they see is along those lines. Those objects uh, are interconnected and probably with Birkeland currents. And then uh, previous to that, uh, they also came out with a uh, story about a celestial sandbar has been discovered that connects two massive islands of galaxies. Now, Wall and I always say that galaxies themselves are interconnected, but here we've got galaxy clusters, islands of galaxies, that they say are connected by celestial sandbars. Again, there's this evidence of, a, of an interconnection between all sorts of um, scale in the cosmos. And uh, as I said for years, Wall and I have been putting forward the idea that the universe is filled by cosmic network of filaments that interconnect everything. Some people call those filaments stringy things as well as... Anyhow, we're of the opinion, Wall and I, that uh, the stars, and of course that, that includes the sun, form when the so-called z-pinches occur in random locations along these Birkeland currents. In other words, in, cosmo, in the cosmos, you can visualize you've got this essentially electrical transmission line. It's hard to believe it, but it, that's what, it's, what it is. Radio astronomers have identified it from its the properties of its uh, radiation, electromagnetic radiation, that that's, it is electromagnetic and it is very much like a, a transmission line. And if the, one of those transmission lines gets a tight bend or, or you know, a crink in it or a slight constriction, an instability can occur there. And what it's typically called is a Z-pinch. That is, it's, it forms along the, the Z-axis, that is the axial direction of the Birkeland current. And there's a well-known phenomenon that occurs in uh, some current streams that have been observed in the, in the laboratory here on Earth as well as in the sky. And it's called the sausage instability. And that can result in a series of stars being formed along one such current. Um, it's reminiscent of a string of sausage links. And um, if you were trying to visualize that, the, the, the sausages themselves are not the stars. It's the knots in between the sausages that are the stars. It's where the, the tube is constricted. That's where, the, that's where the stars form. But anyway, Wall and I have created some images. He, he drew one it was a beautiful image, and I, I've drawn a couple more that show what the, uh, what the neighborhood of a star like the sun the so-called heliosphere of the sun, might look like as a result of this process. It's almost identical to some of the hourglass shapes that astronomers have seen in certain planetary nebulae. 
they used to call uh, the uh, those planetary nebula dying stars. Uh, they've cut that out recently, and uh, maybe some places they still may call them dying stars. Now I've begun to hear them talking about the, actually the birth of stars, which is, of course, at least in Wall, in my opinion, quite correct. That's exactly what we're seeing in a Z pinch, is the birth of a new object. It's an explosive, uh, but as I say, a violent reaction that throws off all sorts of uh, radio frequency, uh, light uh, energy, and uh, X ray energy. Of course, whether or not any one of these uh, objects, these Z pinches, are are visible in the sky depends on whether or not the Birkeland current that is making up these uh, these objects is in the glow mode or the arc mode. So, of course, the whole thing may be invisible if the plasma is in the so-called dark mode. Uh, people should realize, I hope most people do by this time, if they've listened to me long enough, my rants about uh, dark mode plasma. The, the, uh, the plasma that we all know is in the upper atmosphere of Earth is in dark mode. We can't see it. Unless, of course, it's, it is excited by a, a Birkeland current, and then we see an aurora. But typically, if it is not being excited by a Birkeland current, you can't see it. It's dark. You can bounce radio waves off it. So don't fool yourself. It's there. Anyway, the only thing we can see pretty much in our heliopause is the so-called ENA ring. The ENA is a, uh, an abbreviation for excited neutral atom. And there was a NASA, cooperative NASA and Lockheed Martin a program called IBEX. And IBEX, I-B-E-X, stands for the Interstellar Boundary Explorer. So this was a program, a NASA program, to try to find out as much as they could that, that envelope that surrounds our sun and all of, it, all of its planets. And, you know, Voyager 1, Voyager 2 are out there right now investigating. But also this IBEX mission has been looking at that area. And they've discovered that, indeed, there is a ring. And if you look at the pictures that Wall and I have drawn of what we think that heliopause or heliosphere looks like. The heliopause is, of course, the outer skin of the, of the heliosphere. If you take a look at that, you realize there is a, a ring there, a natural ring, kind of like the intersection between those two three-dimensional paraboloids, I guess you might say they look like. Anyway, they, uh, Ibex posted an image of what they thought the first... Helios, their first idea of what the heliosphere, heliosphere is supposed to look like, and it had only one tail. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, if, if Wall and I are right, and uh, this is the result of a, of a pinch in a, in a, a tube-like structure like a Birkeland current, then there ought to be two tails. I mean, you ought to be able to stand here in, on Earth or somewhere, somewhere in the solar system and look up the, the, the pipe in one direction, and turn around and look in the opposite direction and look down the pipe in the other direction. So there ought to be two tails. And so when I took the, uh, this is, of course, uh, artistic license, you might call it, or dishonesty. I, I hope it's not dishonest. But I took the uh, one of the Ibex uh, images and put a second tail on it. I said, aha, this is what it should really look like. Recently, uh, news came back from Ibex, a, a paper from 2013 that's fairly recent, described a two-lobed shape down the tail. The two astronomers suggested that the lobes observed might actually have been two jets with interstellar non-heliospheric material in between. Well, you can call them jets if you want to. I think what it is is you're seeing the Birkeland currents extended, one single Birkeland current extended in both directions away from our heliosphere. But anyway, the Ibex uh, announcement said that these newly postulated jets look like baby versions of the superpowered jets that exist around exotic objects like black holes and pulsars. Well, of course, that's, that's, that's nonsense. But what they mean to say is they look like the jets that exist around planetary nebula, like, for example, uh, the uh, Minkowski 2-9 that is so, uh, so much, I, I call it, uh, the uh, the prototype, if you will, of all of these Z pinches, and uh, it looks exactly like that. At least that, to my mind, that's what I think it's going to look like when they finally uh, realize what they've got. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info. <laughs>